a triple expansion steam engine that needs some attention, part 12. This video shows how I usually fit displacement lubricators to model steam engines. I'm also fitting unions to the water and vacuum pumps and running the engine using compressed air. When I first got this engine it didn't run at all and now it doesn't run too badly to say there are still quite a few worn parts on it that need replacement. Here's a high speed compressed air run to start the episode. That's the running for now, there are some clips at the end of the video showing the engine running, once I've fitted the displacement lubricator. This is the displacement lubricator I'm going to fit. It's an automatic lubricator manufactured by Don English of Jubilee Fittings. I had quite a few of these made a few years ago and I used to sell them. But now with the amount of tutorial videos that I'm making, I don't have much free time for any other ventures. In my hand is a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch T-piece. These are made by Chris English, who is one of Don English's sons. You can buy them from Blackgates Engineering. Before I start the job, I'm going to remove this temporary fitting that I made. And as usual, using my trusty Barco spanner, in no time at all, it's removed. I'm going to fit this T-piece to the flange on the steam chest. This 5 16 by 32 threads per inch T piece is designed to use 3 16 pipe. To make it fit my application, I need to modify it, and the first thing to do is drill down the centre part tapping size for quarter by 32 threads per inch. The tolerances are quite close here. You can see in this clip that the diameter of the hole doesn't leave a lot of metal in the threaded part. This is where the lubricator is going to fit. And in this clip I'm threading the hole quarter by 32 threads per inch. Even though the threaded part of this fitting is now not very strong, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to fit a union nut to it. The thread on the displacement lubricator is also a quarter by 32, and it's very long and goes right down into the fitting. Over now to the lathe, and I've screwed the fitting into a union nut that's been held in the chuck. And here I'm going to use some Loctite 603, to permanently fix a union nut on this end of the fitting. Loctite 603 is the high power retainer and here I'm tightening the nut onto the fitting itself. As you can see it's also screwing it further into the other nut. Once the Loctite 603 is cured it will be very easy to remove it from the nut that's in the chuck. After tapping both the union nut and the fitting a quarter by 32 I put the machine into reverse to remove the tap. Now all I have to do is unscrew the fitting from the union nut in the chuck. A very simple and easy job. The paintwork was already marked on this fitting. Now I need to remove the paintwork and I'm going to do this by dropping it into a small pot of gun wash. This stuff is used for restoring spray paint guns and other equipment. It's very much like cellulose thinner or lacquer thinner. While this powerful solvent is dissolving the paint, it's over to my Boxford lathe to make a thread adapter. I'm using a piece of quarter of an inch diameter stainless steel and I'm verifying that it's stainless steel by using a small magnet. The stainless steel that I normally use is non-magnetic. Stainless steel can be difficult to machine. I'm not using a cutting lubricant on this small part so you can see what I'm doing. Cutting the steel with a carbide tip cutter is fine. But when you're drilling stainless steel, if you let the drill rub, that's the end of the point and you won't get through it. This drill is blunt, listen to the sound it's making. I removed the drill bit, took it over to my Drill Doctor 750X drill sharpening machine and now the drill cuts perfectly. I really recommend these Drill Doctor machines, I think they're good. Here I'm applying some cutting lubricant to the part because I'm going to thread it. I'm doing this completely by hand using a die stock and I keep the die stock square to the work by using the tailstock chuck to follow it in. I have about three tailstock die holders but none of them are fitted with a quarter by 32 threads per inch die. Once I'd threaded the required length of the piece of stainless steel bar I got ready to part it off. Once again it's a good idea to use cutting lubricant this is a high-speed steel tool, and if it rubs on the stainless steel, the stainless steel will work harden 
and I won't be able to part it off. The parting off job left a bit of a lip on the work and here I've put a completed component in the chuck to clean up the area where I parted it off. Starting with a carbide tipped lathe tool and then finishing with a file. Back over now to the bench and as you can see the solvent's done its job and the paint is almost removed. To finish the cleaning up operation I'm using my bench mounted Proxon motor tool fitted with a wire brush and this gives a really nice finish, sort of a brush finish. Here's the displacement lubricator on the bench, I gave it a bit of a clean up with some Brasso because it's been in the box for quite a long time and I also removed the lock nut. In my hand is a bottle of Loctite 603, this is a high power retainer. Please note I am not going to use this to fit the displacement lubricator to the T-piece. I'm going to use the 603 to fit the thread adapter into the T-piece. Now's a good time to remove the flange from the steam chest. A fiddly but simple job. All I need to do now is fit the T-piece into this flange. And at the flange end I'm using Loctite 542, this is a thread sealant. Now I need to make sure that everything's in the right position. Here I'm screwing the lubricator into the T-piece. I drilled this union nut, quarter of an inch diameter, because it's going to be used as a lock nut to fix the lubricator in the correct position. I know this is not a Stuart lubricator. I didn't have a Stuart lubricator so I couldn't use one. This will be perfectly fine. Here I'm pumping some oil into the inlet to the primary steam chest. Displacement lubricators do not, and I repeat, do not work with compressed air. They work by condensing the steam to water which displaces the oil. No steam, no displacement, no lubrication. Time for a bit of running, I'll stop talking. As I've mentioned a couple of times previously, this video series is not about rebuilding this engine, it's just about making it go. And go it does, it seems to run quite well, but it does need a bit more attention. I'm going to start another series at some future time called Rebuilding a Stuart Triple Expansion Engine. This clip shows that I've fitted unions to the vacuum pump and also to the water pump, but I think the union on the water pump makes it a bit too long. I'll change that later. And that is it. When the weather gets a bit warmer, I'll probably give this a steam test on the bench, or even outside. It's a bit too cold at the moment, even in the workshop it's cold, so if I run the steam engine inside, then the condensation is going to rust all my tools. And that's it for this video, I'm going to do some running until the end of the video, and that doesn't need any narration whatsoever. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.